Hey, welcome to the Sunnydale Diaries, a podcast where I, Melanie, and I, Sean, watch and review every episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer and discuss related topics and how they might impact our lives. Yeah. As a reminder, Sean has been a fan of Buffy since its first airing, hence watched it several times. I have not. This is my first time ever watching Buffy, and so we have very different perspectives here. If you have not watched or listened to our podcast before, welcome. Hello. And if you have before, welcome back. You can find us online at any of your streaming services or on YouTube. Please leave us a review. Reach out to us any way you want. We'd love to hear from you. Tonight, we are discussing Season 3, Episode 12, Helpless. Yep. And I want to say right off the bat that I think my prediction was on the ball. You you were very, very accurate. Uh Uh-huh. You had said that Buffy loses her abilities, and you did say, like, she reaches out to her friends for help. I did say that. And, of course, what was I thinking? She never reaches out to her friends for help. (laughs) That was the wish from me. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you, with just the title, Helpless, you pretty much hit the nail on the head. Wow. The main point of the episode was mm-hmm. her losing her abilities. Mm-hmm. Got it. So, so let's the, talk about some stuff. Yeah. The first time that I watched this episode, and I, and I w- watched this one air live in... I think this was January of 99, and I had driven over to my friend Marge's house. You've met her. Yes. And I'm our- uh, we're, we were watching the episode together, and it was January, cold winter in New York. Sure. The weather was fine. Like, it was clear when I got there. We watched the episode, had a good time. I go to leave, and an ice storm had started. Not ice a snowstorm. <laughs> not, the not ice, the ice storm. <laughs> An ice storm. Oh, an ice storm. Okay. Not a Yes. And my car was coated in ice, but I, I had to get home. And she lived uh, probably 15 minutes from me. Okay. So I'm going home and I'm on, there's a, a road on Long Island, Nichols Road. It was like a, a double lane highway, like 19 here in, in Clearwater. And I'm driving along and I'm coming up to where I would exit the highway. So my off ramp is coming up. And somebody behind me starts skidding on the ice, slams into me Whoa. from the back, she basically just shows me down the off-ramp. I can't stop. I go across four lanes of cross traffic. Oh, my God. So I couldn't stop. Thankfully, there was, you know, it was a little late and there was no cars on the road, but I ended up like going against four lanes of traffic. Whoa. Um, you know. And then was able to, thankfully, you know, gain control and stop driving. The car who hit me, I don't know if they must have just kept going because there was no one behind me. Uh, so that holy was that's my, 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 near, my near death experience. Holy moly. Uh, How have you never told me that story before? Have you told me that story before? I don't think I have. Wow. And when I was in a, when I was a freshman in college, I, uh, I, I had an incident on the way to a final exam with my car, which is another story I'll need to tell you. And I ended up getting dropped off for the final, and my friend drove me home. And after she dropped me off at that same intersection, she got hit. Oh, my gosh. And the car rolled over <gasps> a couple of times. So that's, like, going through my mind as I'm flying. That's what I was going to ask you. When that was happening... What was going through your mind? Was it like slow motion? Did your life flash before your eyes? Did my, you my see life. a light at the end of the tunnel? Did you? <laughs> I like, remember... what, I, what did I not do that I regret not doing? <laughs> None of that. No. I, I remember screaming. Oh, yeah. Um, the whole thing of turned into the skid that was out, out the window at that point. Because it was like you're not in your right move. mind. <laughs> yeah. All I see is the red light coming at me that I'm going through because I can't. Did, stop. did you see him coming? Did you see them coming behind you that you and you did. were I, able yeah, to know yeah. it was about to impact? Yes, Ooh. which I don't know if that was better or not because yeah, I, I knew that you tense up. Thankfully, I wasn't going very fast because it was an ice storm. Yeah. But if I was doing like normally, it's like a 55 mile an hour road. I that I normally would have been going that. Far. <sighs> that that's my helpless story. I was helpless in the car. 
Oh, I guess I have a similar helpless story. Okay. And you were even involved in this one. When I came back from New England, when my grandmother was moving down from New England, and you and I were up there for on vacation, right? And then yep. we met her and she flew with us. We escorted her on the plane ride back. And then yep. we were driving to my house, stopped at a gas station. Did I have a flat tire? Is that why we stopped at the gas station? I think that's what happened. Yes, yes, yes. And a flat because, tire. That's why yeah, you guys we were, were coming over or why Michael was coming over. Yes, because, yeah, yes. you had stopped at that. Okay. That's, I think it was stopped at a gas K. station yeah. about a mile from my house, pulled in, called your husband because we had a flat tire. Could he come help us? Because you lived like five minutes away. And he's the one who does those kind of That's things. right. Not and me. so we're there. And then I think he was there already. And my mom and I were standing at the back of the car. Right. Doing the trunk something. Open. We're parked at the edge of the parking lot. So this, the store, the gas station is here. Cars parked this way. We're over here. A guy in a pickup truck with all sorts of yard debris in the back of his truck, unsecured and like sticking out, backs up, backs so the all the debris and stuff, the branches are sticking out the back of the truck. He backs into me and mom standing at the and almost impales us with the branches. Yeah, pinned you. Right? Yeah. And so yeah. we're like screaming when you said you were screaming. But I think I was screaming, but I don't it was like out of body experience and he just kept coming and we were screaming. And so everybody, you guys are all at the front of the car and have no idea why the heck we're screaming. And then that guy stood with us for a while and the police came and they asked me if I wanted to press charges. And I didn't because I was afraid at that point of retaliation of living by myself, but that was so scary. Like he just started, he was like pushing us with that tree branches into my car. Oh my God, that was horrible. But yeah, I, the weirdest thing about that was screaming, but not realizing I was screaming. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the only thing I remember about that, other than that, is my grandmother. No, I remember two things. My grandmother getting out and the the wife of the guy that was driving the truck started mouthing off and my grandmother got in her face. It was like, you don't talk to my granddaughter like that. (laughs) And the only thing I remember is the guy took off. Yep. And um, Michael dropped the around to try and get the guy's license tag numbers. <laughs> yep. Oh my gosh. Crazy. All right, let's so, talk about uh, Yeah. Let's birthday talk about cake. Birthday. Since, yeah, Buffy's birthday. Buffy's Always 18th fun. 18th birthday. Do you remember your 18th birthday? I was thinking about it. I remember my 17th because I have a picture of me. I'll, I'll put it up. It's a classic. Yeah. But I don't remember what i did for 18 not oh i take that back i saw independence day uh in the theater with uh, your birthdays my on the, in the summer yeah 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 with my girlfriend with your girlfriend oh did you hold hands i believe we did yeah did she give you a present i don't remember is it a book of poetry <laughs> it was not it wasn't a very long relationship <laughs> Because we started you, because you realized together. that you don't like women. Well, well, <laughs> that probably played a role. But we had started college together and we were like carpooling together. And then she met this guy and this guy told her that she wasn't allowed to. Like I think at that point we had pretty much already been broken up. I mean, oh. We were just friends at that point, but she wasn't allowed to talk to me anymore. Oh, yeah. Ultimatum. And I never saw her after that. <gasps> she listened to him? Yeah, yeah. Oh, cut off all communication. Yeah. yeah. Man. But yeah, then now I remember I did see Independence Day for my 18th birthday. Good movie. That was a good movie. Yeah. I remember, you remember you I remember going to see that in the theater and it was sold out. And I think we went, like the only seats they had were in the front row. Oh. And we were like, no. And we left. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad you left because I, no, I... The, the last movie I saw in the front row was the very first Transformers in 2007. Oh, man. And I was hungover. Oh, man. And all that action and all that, no, it wasn't good. Me, I saw Spaceballs in the front <laughs> row. And then I saw the first Batman, Christian Bale Batman movie in the front row mm. with a guy on a first date. I don't know oh, why wow. we stayed in that front seat 
but well, no, thank you. Uh, now I am a back row girl. I, yeah, I, you like the back row too. Where we normally go for the yeah. middle right side, but we'll take the back. That's fine. I like having people behind me. The only thing about being in the back row is then you got to look down over all the people with their cell phones out. Do you really? Which is annoying to me. I guess I don't notice it because normally oh. we're in like the very first stadium row. Oh yeah. So we don't yeah, really so everybody see. Everybody in front of you is flat. I just, uh, I don't look at my phone in a the movie theater. Don't. I, I even put my watch on. Do not disturb. I think when we went to see the Deadpool movie, I was happy because the seats were really high. And so you couldn't see into, but the guy in front of me took out his phone so I could see it between the seats. He, it wasn't just a quick check the time. It was like, he was like scrolling. Makes me sound I know angry. it was hard for me not to say anything. <laughs> I kept it in. Cool. So I do remember my 18th birthday and it was a party at my house and it was the night that my mom kicked my dad out. <laughs> So oh, right before boy. my party, he came down the stairs with his bag and he was like, I guess you don't need me here. And he left and whatever. I had a great time at that party. And that was when I think I told the story that they were getting ready to put up decorative mirrors all over the room on one of the walls. And so my yes. mom had written happy 18th birthday, Melanie. I wonder if I can find a picture of that somewhere. And everybody got behind cool. the wall. That was great. And then uh, I remember some popular kids came to my party, which was a, a real coup. Ooh. I know. Ooh. I know. It's funny that you say that about your dad, because my dad also moved out. And that night, Trixie Sticks had a party. She was going off to college. Yeah. So it was like, she was throwing you know, her own send off. Yeah. And you know, same thing. I, like, I remember my sister was like in her room crying all day. Well, I went to the party and had a great time. Yeah. <laughs> what you going to do? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? <laughs> Oh, dad's uh, birthday cake. Do mm -hmm. you have a, do you have a, an ultimate, your favorite? No, I love a Publix cake. Publix it's hard cake. to get better than the Publix cake. Mm -hmm. I know when I was young, my mom, her go-to cake was a vanilla cake with a layer of jam and then more vanilla cake and then some frosting. That was always good. I always liked that. And I think once she made cupcakes in ice cream cones Oh, that's cute. and then, yeah, it was cute. But yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> cake is good. It's hard to yeah. mess up cake. I think my sister-in-law, two years ago when we came up here on vacation, you were there. She got a really a pretty good cake. Mm -hmm. I think I remember that was a good cake. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a super fancy, expensive cake for me. Like I said, I'm good with grocery store cake. Yeah. When I was a kid, like really young, there was a, a baker in the town of Old Over, Bankerts, or as my parents would say, Bankets. Um and they would make these boys cakes like in the shape of a train. I guess it was going to be a boys cake yeah. but at the time. Six a boys eight. cake in the shape of a train. And every year from probably like two to eight, I had a train cake. Yeah. That, they were a good bakery. That They're still good. in business. Go ahead. For my husband's 40th birthday, our friend Randy, who made our wedding cake, he made, he made Mike's uh, 40th birthday cake. Yeah. And it was Nutella filled. Like a Nutella icing Yum. or filling is good. Yum. I, I love cakes with any kind of filling. As long as it's not fruit. I'm not a fruit. So you wouldn't be guy. you wouldn't be on board with the jam in the middle cake. It's fun. As, as I grow older, <laughs> uh, I can appreciate a little more, but like, I want whipped cream. Really? Pudding. Okay. Oh yeah, okay. So that's a touchy subject. Whipped cream frosting or buttercream? I'm more of a whipped cream guy. You are. Hmm. Buttercream is just, I'll eat it. Don't get, don't get me wrong. It's just too much. It's, just, it's, too, it's much. too much. It's too much. Sean. What are your feelings on ice cream cake? I like it. It's not like my go. If I had the choice, like if it's my birthday and I'm picking out the cake. Yeah. I'm not going to go for an ice cream cake, but again, I'll eat it. And Carvel with the crunchy in the middle. Cookie puss. You know, cookie cookie o, o puss. Fudgy. Fudgy the whale. Cookie. Cookie Opus? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, they had Cookie Opus, and they gave him green icing for St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. I was thinking like octopus. I'm oh, confused. I know uh, a few years ago, we I was down at my brother's for my birthday, or to celebrate my birthday. And so this might have been before my niece was even, she might have been just a little baby. And so I brought my nephew with me to Publix to pick out the cake. And so we ended up with a Lightning McQueen Cars cake for Aunt Mel's birthday. I got pictures of that. That's a good picture. It's cute. We were very excited. I, I do all the options if you do go to get a, a cake from Publix. There are many options for 
icings and fillings. And, yeah. Oh, it's good. I will I say, I did, for my first wedding, I got Publix cake for my wedding cake. And I think they charged more because I said it was a wedding cake. And I just got a plain a cake with some kind of jam in the middle and like a white frosting. No decoration just because we decorated ourselves. And it was very mm -hmm. expensive. <laughs> I, did, I did not do that. I was not smart. Any yeah, brides out there, if you're getting a wedding cake from Publix, don't tell them it's a wedding cake. <laughs> it's just a big it's a celebration. Cake. It's a celebration cake. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Still delicious though. Yummo. Okay. I saw yeah. there was a funny TikTok back when I was still on TikTok and it was a lady sitting in her car with a whole cake from Publix. I'm an adult. <laughs> if I want to buy a cake for myself, I can. And she's just sitting there with a fork eating the cake. That's right. <laughs> All right. You want to get into Helpless? Let's do it. But before we do, I wanted to make sure I mentioned this earlier on in the episode, not just at the end. If you have any comments or thoughts, you can email us. You at can. At Sunnydale Diaries at gmail.com. Sure. We haven't gotten an email in a while. Reach out. What's, uh, what's going on with you people? There's got to be a lot. How did you find out about Buffy? My friend Sean badgered me about it for 12 years. Oh, you're not talking to me? Oh, okay. All right. I'm not talking uh, to you. All right. We already know the answer to that. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. I was thinking we need to have another contest or something. I was thinking that the other night too. And then I thought, all right. I'm going to put this off for a day. Okay. Let's get into it. Okay. <laughs> Start off at a, it looked like an indoor picnic at Angel's Nice Mansion. carpet picnic. Who's not mm -hmm. done this carpet picnic? A, a couple just whole apples, a baguette. <laughs> I thought I saw some cheese. <laughs> Maybe there's some cheese. My first note was after indoor picnic at the mansion, why are they torturing themselves? They've already what? said... That it's not going to work. They can't be together. Yeah. So let's have a picnic. <laughs> this is not healthy. They're, but they're, yeah, they're going to, they're, they did, but aren't they romantically involved? Didn't they give into that? Mm, I don't think so. Oh, did I, I miss assumed. something? I just assumed. Yeah. No. When it was Cause, on the hilltop and the, with the snow. Oh, uh, I, I just thought they were. I didn't think they were very romantically together, but oh. I guess it's creeping. Okay. I guess it's creeping back in. All right. Uh. And then they had a little fight practice. All right. Again, you, you can't play wrestle with a guy that you're not into. You can't. You, no, <laughs> no. I, you, you're I obviously I into each other if you're play wrestling. That's like, a, that's a thing. And she goes to stake him with the baguette. <laughs> It was a baguette. I, I think so. I think so. It was the baguette. And then it falls on the floor and he picks it up again. And I'm like, is he going to put that back on the picnic? Like they're going to eat that now? It's all sweaty <laughs> and stuff. And... Ew. Sweaty baguette. Sweaty baguette. Name, That's a punk band name if I ever heard one. <laughs> and that sweaty baguette. I have, a... <laughs> I have another band name reference later on. Okay, good. All right. All right. Interesting. Uh, I said, the about... scene is very confusing to me. Okay. I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah, what are they doing here? I, I think he, she just came over to hang out and have a picnic. Okay. And play fight. <laughs> yeah. And work out. Does she work out with him now? They gave up Tai Chi and now it's... It's a little more hands-on. Yeah, out. see? That's cool cool okay, all right. We find out it's Buffy's birthday. <sighs> Never good. It's her 18th Never birthday, good. yeah. And she's got plans. She's going to the ice show with Monzo. Yeah, yeah. Older man. Like, Ooh, we're going to see, it's going to be a Monzo episode. All right. Yeah. We haven't seen him in a while. <laughs> and then they goes to the library where she and Giles are doing some gem analysis. No, he calls them vibrator stones. <laughs> the vibratory. No, he doesn't say, my, my, my closed captioning said vibratory. He does not say the word vibratory. Oh, really? Okay. He says vibrator. <laughs> I rewound it. And now, like so. opening. <laughs> for sweaty baguette? Yeah, for sweaty baguette. Vibrator stones. Aren't there like balls that do that? What? Aren't there vibrating balls? What? What is this? <laughs> that what is that? Are that you was... talking about the Kegel balls? 
They don't vibrate. No, no I know they don't. No, there's a oh, there's a name. <laughs> oh, you guys! Jay, if anybody like knows a, what Sean is talking about, I don't know if I want to know. Or like a jade egg that vibrates. Can I tell you a funny and inappropriate story that you can cut out if you want? I think I've told sure. you this story that someone I know had those Kegel balls. You haven't told me this. Oh, uh -huh. someone who lives close to me had those. And she bought them at one of those, I had one of those parties at my house, one of those erotica parties and they were gold colored and they came in this really nice decorative box. I don't know why, but then somebody broke into her house and they stole them out of her nightstand. They must've thought that they were going to be worth something because they were gold. <laughs> And I was like, wobble. I'm really sorry that this happened to you, but I would love to be a fly on the wall at the pawn shop that these two dudes went to to try and hawk these Kegel balls. <laughs> How do we even get on this topic? <laughs> Black market Kegel balls. <laughs> All right. This podcast has taken a turn. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. Um, Benoit balls. Don't they vibrate? No. I don't no, think so. Okay. I don't have, I'm not that familiar with them. If anybody yeah. out there can familiarize us with that. Are those the ones that are on a string? No, that's different. <laughs> that's very different. <laughs> Look, I'm turning red. This episode has gone off the rails already. Oh my God. Oh. Gr Grant, turn this episode off. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Uh, what is your, what is your, for our young okay. audience? Somebody fill us in. Fill the old people in. What are we talking about? I don't know. All right. Anyway, so he's Five trying to get stones. Buffy to study these crystals. Yes. All right. And she is not into it. That's a lot of crystals he had, like really big crystals. I know yeah. a little crystal, if you go to the gem shop in Blue Ridge, those are not cheap. Like a mm -hmm. giant crystal like that. What's He's not There's paying for those out of librarian money. Well, that's what I was going to say. That's the council supply these crystals isn't there a name for like oh. the really big one i think maybe like, joyce is getting those on the black market using gallery uh, funds i can see that for the I slaying is there a geode geode that's the name they sell Thank those you. at the rock shop and all the tourist places around here sell those geodes that you can crack open right there and maybe get a good crystal Oh, we could do a little cosplay from this episode. Oh. I'll get a blonde wig. <laughs> I'll get some pills. <laughs> My pills! <laughs> There's a little dig at Faith. Faith is not interested in proper training. Faith, Faith, Faith is on unannounced walkabout, a.k.a. what's-her-name is filming something else somewhere. Eliza Dushku. Yeah, Dushku. The douche. <laughs> She's filming yeah. something somewhere else. But yeah, that was a little dig, wasn't it? But come on, Buffy. Back on the crystals. Back on the crystals. Eyes on me. Let's go. No, she's not into it. And then we, okay, and then Buffy wants to go on patrol because she's got some energy to burn because she didn't burn it all off with Angel. No. And sexual tension. Go to the playground. You, we're the place of dead children and vampires. Right? Like right. set number three. Set number three. We got to use this set more than once. With the merry-go-round is over here. Come on. A vampire can jump on that, right? Come on. Write it in the script. Let's do it. <laughs> There's a fight scene. And Buffy is losing the fight. And she almost gets staked with her own stake. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She gets thrown to the ground. She He jumps on top of her. And then we get credits. Yeah. Yeah. She does and end she up taking him. him. She headbutts him. Yeah. And she gets the upper hand and she takes him out. And then we're back at the library and Buffy is telling Giles something is wrong while well, she's throwing knives at the bullseye and she's missing everyone. Her game has gone to Cuernavaca. I looked it up. It's a real place. Where is it at? It's in Mexico. It's south of Mexico City. I've got a screenshot of the map I'll send you. Okay. Yes. In case anybody is interested. Where Cuernavaca is. Yeah. Giles says maybe it's the flu. She should take it easy for 48 hours. So I thought, so, you know, I've seen this one before. So I knew everything that was going to occur. So I was watching out for 
his reactions. Um, and so when he said, oh, lay low for 48 hours, I'm like, oh, because he cares. Uh, yeah, but also that's very unlike Giles to say, go ahead and take a rest for 48 hours instead of, here's some NyQuil. <laughs> go sleep it off. I'll see you tomorrow for training. <laughs> But she's getting worried because she got the ice show with Monzo. Right. Have you ever been to, been to an ice show before? Yes. Okay. Do you want to know which one? Sesame Street. Yes. My sister went to that. How old was I? I was in college. <laughs> and I'm sure you loved every I did. Of it. I made my roommate go with me. And it was amazing. I've never been to ice capades or anything like that. Mm-hmm. No. I'm sure it's either. great. I'm sure it's great. I've never been to Disney on ice. That would be fun, too. Yeah. I've seen a lot of clips of Encanto on ice. Oh. And it looks... There's a lot of trapeze. Not trapeze work, but they're they're, they're like hanging from the ceiling. Oh, like aerial stuff. Aerials. That's the word. Yeah. I've never seen that. That movie. You should watch it. You'd like it. Is that the one where we don't talk about... What's his name? Bruno. Bruno. In my head, all I hear is, you're making things up again, Arnold, from the Book of yeah, Mormon. Book of Mormon. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about Kevin. We don't talk about Arnold. We don't talk about Bruno. I don't know who Kevin is. But yeah, it's all a mishmash in my head. Welcome to my yes. life. Okay. <laughs> then the group is out in the schoolyard, and they're talking about the Buffy's tradition with Monzo about going to the ice show. And Oz says, ice is cool. It's water, but it's not. But it's not. <laughs> Willow went to an ice show when she was a kid, and she was so excited, she threw up on Woodstock. Oh. <laughs> and then Buffy goes home. Yeah. And there's flowers. Oh, flowers. Flowers but... are bad, never a good thing. No. No. His, no, Monzo canceled. His quarterly projections are unraveling. And Joyce Bad says, dad. he promises to make it all up to you. It's there. It's all there in the letter. And I wrote, of course, Joyce opened the letter that was meant for Buffy and read the whole thing. Yep. Of course she did. <laughs> Worst. She did. I'll give her a tiny bit of credit because I'm with you. Don't about do it, Don. <laughs> she did offer to take her <laughs> if she could get someone to cover for the gallery. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. Not necessary. Oh. Joyce. I don't know if you noticed it was only for a second, but Buffy had a really pretty nail polish color. I did not know. It was like lavender. And for I for that to jump out at me, it means something. Okay, all right. Know. This means like, something. Oh, that's part of your cosplay. <laughs> yes. Lavender <laughs> nail polish. I think I have some. I'll bring it down with me. <laughs> and a geode. Yeah, yeah, and a geode. <laughs> okay. All right. uh, then we move on to Sunnydale Arms. Obviously haunted house with rooms to rent and breakfast included. It looked very, very, uh, <laughs> very, very scary and, and, and trashy. Yes. And we go in and there's a guy bricking up a room. And I said, there's definitely somebody in that room tied up and gagged. And he's bricking <laughs> him up in there at Growl and Post style. Cask of Amantia. Yes, for sure. And we meet uh, Hobson and uh, old guy Quentin, who's one of those actors who's in everything. Did you look him up? Another one of those frustratingly nameless but omnipresent and talented faces of stage, film, and TV. Yep, one of those guys. I know him from Ghostbusters 2, which is a weird thing to remember that he played the judge in that. But we also make reference to Blair, and I guess Blair might be the guy doing the brickwork in the background. And going forward in this episode, I'm always calling him Hobson slash Blair because I have no idea which of them is which. Yes. How else it would have been if it would have been Blair from The Facts of Life. <laughs> that would have been amazing. <laughs> Just Lisa, Lisa Welch in the big, the big hair. And nobody comments on it. There's We also we pan over to this giant box that's got padlocks on it and looks really yeah. old and big hulking box. And we're getting very close. The Slayer's prep is nearly complete. Ooh. Oh, bless you, Drew. Oh, wow. Now we're back at the library. Buffy is telling Giles about what happened with the ice show that Monzo can't take him. And she's very obviously hinting to him that he should take her instead. And it's going right over his head. Yeah, he's not hearing it He's not hearing it all. He's just like, crystals, crystals. Look at the crystals. (laughs) I felt bad for her because she was really, really trying to drop some hands. And he just wasn't hearing it. So there's a big blue geode. Crystal. 
And he's look at the center. Is that what put her? And then she's in a trance. Is that what put her in the trance? I think so. Look yes. at the middle. Look at the center of this crystal. A flaw in the middle of it. Yeah. She was out fast. She was. And then she he's was. in there, injects her with something. Here's a question to you, Sean. Why in TV and movies do they always squirt it out the top of the... I know it's in practice. I would think it's to get out bubbles, air bubbles, right? Do yeah. they really do that? That's my understanding. So like I, we never injected in, in the role that I had, mm -hmm. but that is my understanding is, but you're supposed to do this like a little bit, like he squirted in like five minutes. <laughs> like five a minutes. dose. <laughs> and then now again, I know, you know, they're not going to get it right. No. But. Oh. <laughs> yes. He put like his, like, I think it was his thumb and middle finger, like he, on her arm and then put the needle in like below it. And I was like, oh, I was screaming at the TV. Because he could stick himself? Yes. yes. All she has to do is jerk a little bit and that needle going right in his finger. Like you're supposed you are supposed to No, I if think you're, I think you're shot, underestimating the power of the flaw in the middle of the blue crystal and how deeply she she's moving. under. She's really under. Please. Not so much that she doesn't just snap out of it like the second that he pulls that needle out of her arm. And she's oh, did I black out or did I go zone out? Do you not feel that pierce in your piercing in your arm? Apparently, it's a pretty strong blue crystal. It's like blue kryptonite. That blue <laughs> Is that a thing? I know there's gold. I know there's I, green. I think there are different red. colors of kryptonite. I know there's red kryptonite only because of the Lost Boys. When they're in the I, comic I store, Corey Haim is talking to the Frog Brothers about the kryptonite, I think. Okay. I, I don't know. I remember understand. an episode. I remember an episode of Smallville, and I think they also did it on Supergirl also with red kryptonite. It just makes them, basically, it makes them drunk and crazy. But yeah, he, he was not anchoring properly. You don't put your fingers right above the needle. So, <laughs> Sorry, so, she, so she's, in a, she's in a trance. Uh, he waves his hand in front of the crystal, which snaps her out of it. Oh, okay. I'll... Oh, my God. And she's babbling about something. And he says goodnight. And he looks so evil after he said goodnight. Yeah, he so I got to ask you, because again, it's hard for me because I've seen this one. What were you thinking? When he injected her and then him looking evil, would you think it was like a different Giles or? No, I, I don't know. I don't know that I put that much thought into it. <laughs> I was like, okay. something's up. Something's up. Okay, that's fair. But I didn't know what it was. Yeah. Okay. We're, now we're in the courtyard and Buffy and Willow are talking about Amy Rat, which is pretty funny. And, and it sounds like Willow wants to keep her as pet. <laughs> Yeah, she's got a little wheel. Yeah, a little wheel. And then I was noticing her outfit. And I said, okay, one, she's wearing that very heavy cap. And it looks like a very pleasant California day. I don't know why she's wearing that heavy winter hat. But then I saw the whole outfit. I was like, oh, that's why. Did you? This outfit was so cute. The hat with the yellow sweater. And then a cute pink and yellow polka dot skirt with yellow tights. And white Adidas with red stripe. So cute. It, it was cute. And I said, she reminded me of Parappa the Rapper. Because <laughs> he's got the little hat. Oh, that was the rapping dog on PlayStation, right? Yeah. Yes, I love that game. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can see it. I can Parappa. See it. Yeah. Right. <sighs> and then on the side, some jerko is giving Cordelia a hard time. Because he read into her flirting and was waiting for her all night at the bronze. Whatever. Dark in front of my posse. <laughs> Passe. <laughs> but anyway, he starts getting rough with her. And, and then she slaps him away the first time. And then he's like, oh, I'm not done. And I'm not done costing you. And then Buffy goes over to intervene. And she's like, nothing. yeah, nothing. And then, Cordy and he, oh, man, he pushes her over hard pushes onto that cement block. Now, okay. Yeah. Obviously, she's her powers are there's something up with her powers. How is she not knocked out and like really hurt by that? That was serious. It was. Oh. Yeah, it just starts wearing. Oh, yeah, she's. Ah! Oh no! And he goes, the chick started it. <laughs> the chick. <laughs> Come on, you know her name. <laughs> the chick. Well, I I thought it was interesting that last episode. Um, oh stood up to a guy in in the hallway talked about how people are starting to realize and then she tried again yeah. in this one yeah so she's 
He doesn't, he doesn't just go after the demons. Yeah. He goes you after can't the deal with regular men. That's yeah, a t-shirt. A that That's a t-shirt. You can't deal with regular men. <laughs> all right. Now, Buffy, again, tries to tell Giles something's up, and he doesn't seem concerned at all. He blows her off. He's, we'll figure it out. Yeah, Be on your way. Back to the Sunnydale arms. Then Giles is there talking to the old guy, Quentin. And Quentin's, this is how it's been done for centuries. Cruciamentum. Which is a band. Cru- is that your band? Is that your band name? That's my band. Cruciamentum. Yeah. Did you look that up? Does it mean something? I couldn't find anything except the band. Is that all I could think of was Cruciatus Curse. <laughs> oh, it's yeah, a real band? Yeah. Yeah, it's a real band. Oh, do you think they do you think that's where they got the name from Buffy? I think it's I think it's a possibility. Are they on yeah. Facebook? Instagram? I don't know. I, oh, I it that far. we're reaching out to this band. Okay. Oh yeah. All right. All right. So then, so, whatever this is happens when the Slayer turns eighteen. It's a rite of passage. It's a rite of passage. We've always done it that way. That's right. And they're gonna Brrr. unleash. They're gonna unleash. I know we hate that. They're going to unleash whatever's in the box on her. What's in the box? I know. And then we hear screams from the box and Hobson or Blair are going to go deal with it. They open it and it's a vampire all trussed up like Hannibal Lecter. Yep. Straight jacket. And they're like, Kralik. His name is Kralik. Kralik is there. And they're like, you got to take your pills. And, he's like, oh, you know. and so then they go... To uh, uh, <laughs> administer <of> the pills. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, okay. All right, wait. I gotta wash that down with some water. Wait, wait. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, we got props. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You want to come take a bow? You're my prop master. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> How long ago did you plan that? Or did you that's, just... that's why, as I'm watching it, that's why I was, when I texted you 12, 12 minutes, I would have been on time to record tonight, but it took us 12 minutes to go out to the garage and find something to make the props. As soon as I saw that, I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> Unfortunately, we didn't have anything telescoping. <laughs> that's okay that was amazing that was ridiculous that was ridiculous that was ridiculous amazing yeah it was it was ridiculous Relic and his but pills what are those pills I was, I was gonna ask you what I was trying pills? to remember the name of I was trying to remember the name of your migraine pills and I couldn't what remember are... <laughs> Imitrex it's not Imitrex there you go. maybe it's, it's Imitrex I don't know but and why is he drinking water why does he need to water why is he taking pills he's a vampire would those pills have any effect on him two why are you washing I, it down with water I think it's placebo this is this is my my thinking I th- I think he was taking them when he was alive and they were helping with whatever problem he had even as after being turned to a vampire he still thinks he needs them huh. because it swallows them and he immediately he's fine that's what i was gonna say too is man that is some fast acting all right yeah. so they give him the pills and he calms down then we're back at the library and willow says aha she's been researching what could be happening to buffy aha a curse on slayers oh wait no that's lawyers <laughs> That was funny. That was funny. (laughs) Then there's the discussion between Oz and Xander about the kryptonite, which was very funny. And then, and Buffy's guys, reality. And I was like, that's pretty funny. (laughs) That Buffy the vampire slayer is calling them back to reality. Yes. (laughs) And then Giles comes in. He's still preoccupied with something. No, I haven't found the answer. And he just walks walks into his room. Oh, okay. Back at Sunnydale Arms, Kralik is still screaming. Yeah, he does a lot of that. <laughs> he and he's like tearing at the seam on the straight jacket, and then dislocating Hob- his shoulder. Okay, yeah, dis- but he's is, the seam is coming undone. He calls over Hobson or Blair to give him more pills, and whichever he steps too close, and and Kralik grabs him and is choking him, and 
And but it uh, made me laugh again because as he's choking him, he's Shh, everything's okay now. Like he's in a, in a normal voice. Like I, it wasn't the voice I expected to come out of this screaming mm-hmm. vampire dude. Was, Shh, everything's okay. <laughs> So for a second, I thought he was the same guy who was in the harvest and then was the judge. No, it's not. It's not Different I guy. Yeah, yeah, it did look similar. Um, now uh, we're cut to the mansion where Angel gives Buffy a book of poetry for her birthday. Oh, that's so I, I mean, sweet. She doesn't strike me as the type of person who would enjoy a book. No, and she's like, and I can learn all sorts of fancy words like wilt and, <laughs> and thou. <laughs> now, therefore, <laughs> see. You, you lo- looked happier when you got an arm in a box last year. That's right. That almost that strangled you. Let's see. And then, oh, and he says, and then she's very, she's thinking about her loss of powers. And what if I am not? What if I really do lose my powers? They don't come back. What if I'm the slayer? What do I have to offer? And I wrote down, this is a metaphor for every adult, everywhere, every day of their lives. (laughs) Yes. And then Angel confesses that he watched her before she was the slayer and loved her. Which we no, saw. That's beautiful. And I was like, oh no, that's stalking. Stalking. Yeah. That's concerning. Yeah, anyway. I'm, I'm with you. I don't know. But I guess when you're 18, that's romantic. <laughs> when you're 18 in the 90s, <laughs> we cut back to Kralik and he's like finger licking good off of uh, Hobson or, or Blair, whoever he just ate. And and then he. Uh, Hob, Do- is it Dobson or Hobson? Hobson. Hobson. Hobson or Blair lets him out of the box and he downs a bunch of the pills. This is something else that makes me laugh in movies and TV when somebody goes and they just take the pill container and just dump it down their throats. Yeah. <laughs> that is not accurate dosing. <laughs> There's no way you're getting an accurate dose there. And then Giles goes into the, the sending to arms yeah. and he finds the dead Hobson or Blair and he has Hannah on the railing, pulls it off, it's covered in blood. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, that, that doesn't make him leave. No. When he pulls but his he hand off and covered in blood, he yanks a stair thing off and he's going to go investigate. But then he finds Hobson or Blair and he runs out. Yes. Like, oh, yeah. Dude, just run away. You always just run away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you put your hand on the stairs and it's covered in blood, you run away. <laughs> this is my life rule right there. <laughs> Melanie's life rule number 46. Hand covered in blood, run. Yeah, exactly. Buffy is then walking alone in the dark past a couple of normal guys. Again, you don't deal with regular guys. <laughs> they are harassing her and she's walking away from them. And then she turns and she walks straight into Kralik. And then she runs away screaming for help. Nobody's helping her. Even the cars that almost run her over as she's screaming for help. Nobody stops to help her. Lame. Yeah. yeah. Like that dude that rear-ended you in the ice storm just took off. Kept going. <laughs> um, she tr- she runs away. She tries to do her Buffy leap over the over that chain link fence. Call back to season one. She is unable, so she has to go under the way regular. But she gets stuck do. practically. She does. <laughs> it's Rose, Rose McGowan trying to climb through the doggy door. Yes, and scream. scream. <laughs> like, find an opening that's gonna fit you. Come on. Giles shows up in his car. And she jumps into the car and they get away. Nice. Now we're back with the li- back at the library and Buffy is pleading with Giles, please help me figure it out. And he finally confesses as to what he did. He drugged her with muscle relaxers and adrenal suppressors. Have you ever taken a muscle relaxer? I have. There's yeah. no way you're getting out of bed. <laughs> I'm not the slayer. Well, okay. Uh, she has super powers against muscle relaxers. Yes. It just, oh, okay. All right. We'll let it, I'll let it go. I, I did appreciate, she said, I can't be helpless like that. Yeah. I'm like, oh, they threw the yes, episode title in. That's nice. In case we didn't get it. And then she's, she is not pleased. And she's, and then, and then uh, she's, I don't, I don't know who you are. I can't believe you did that to me. And then Cordelia walks in. Cause she's going to do some actual research for a paper or something. And then I don't know who you are to Giles. And Cordelia's, did she lose her memory? He's Giles. Giles. <laughs> Giles. 
<laughs> that made me laugh. I did like how Buffy, she had the, the Sarah Michelle Geller face crumple crying thing going on. You love that. She does well. That's sick. I, I do. <laughs> sick. <laughs> Um, but when she does says Cordelia, can you drive me home? You could see immediately Cordelia like she knows, snaps out yeah. of the she, and just, and she puts all that in. weird Cordelia stuff aside. Yeah, she knows. I like that. If ever we meet Sarah Michelle Geller, you need to ask her to do the face crumple for our picture. <laughs> okay. All right. I really <laughs> love when your face crumples like that. Can you just do that? And I'm gonna go, he's sick. Just <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. Then we see Joyce is at home. Someone's at the door. She goes out to investigate. What? Did you see what she was doing? She was in, using her checkbook. She oh, I didn't notice. No. Oh, she was writing a bad check to someone. It's She sees somebody lying on the ground in the red coat. She just, oh, Buffy? You're laying on the board? It's Buffy laying on the ground as she does in her coat. Yeah. No, it's Kralik. And then we cut to commercial. Buffy gets home. She immediately throws Monzo's flowers in the trash. And then she finds a Polaroid of Kralik and Joyce with a note on the back that says, come. Who, are were Polaroids still around? Yes, because I had gotten Trixie Six a Polaroid camera for her birthday, I think, that year. Oh. They're still around. Okay, yeah. all right. Our, two things here. One was when Kralik was on the porch pretending to be Buffy. He's wearing a red hoodie of that Buffy hat on. Yeah. And I wonder if that was intentional because they're doing like a little red riding hood thing. Oh, I think here. yes, because later on he makes a reference to what were you doing? You bringing all these sweets to grandma? Definitely. And then the second thing on the back of the Polaroid, it says for enlargement instructions, contact I know that doesn't exist on a Polaroid. No, it didn't. But I was like, ooh, I wonder if there's a sh like a freeze frame we could take of that number and call the phone number. <laughs> Ooh, I like that yeah. Anybody, get us a screenshot of that. We'll call and we'll find out. <laughs> After we talk to the uh, Cruciatus Curse band. So Buffy packs a bag of slaying supplies. <laughs> she can barely lift it. <laughs> yeah. She's off to the boarding house. I thought it was interesting that she, what her outfit. She's in a willow outfit. She's wearing overalls like with a t-shirt under. Oh, okay. And I know earlier I, I, she was wearing some really baggy cargo pants. Yeah, so the card no, wasn't my yeah. favorite. I had to wonder if that was again an, an intentional choice because she's not her usual self. She's oh, just a girl. Oh, no. um, so dress her like that. Okay, got it. So now let's see. Oh, then we're back with Kralik and Joyce at the at the boarding house. There's lots of Polaroids around. He bought like several rounds of film for that Polaroid camera. Yeah. And then yeah. later on, we see that room full of Polaroids. Man, that's a lot of film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that film wasn't cheap. No, Where's he getting uh, this money? Kralik? Council money? Yeah. From Blair. Oh, oh, from Blair? All right. From Hobbs Blair, and Blair? Blair? Wasn't Blair rich on the facts of life? <laughs> yes, yeah, she was. There you go. Nice callback. <laughs> okay. Uh, he, and I said, he's obviously got mommy issues and apparently a pill addiction. <laughs> not a good combo. <laughs> No, not a good combo. Buffy comes in with her crossbow. <clears throat> she finds the bricked up room. She hears the guy calling from behind the bricks. Help me, help, I'm stuck in here. <laughs> but she moves on. Mm -hmm. Gotta find Joyce. We cut back to Quentin and Giles at the library. Giles doesn't give a rat's ass about what the council wants. Damn right. Yeah, right? He just wants to help Buffy. And the clip went and lets him know Buffy just went into the boarding house. That's right. She entered the test 10 minutes ago and Giles takes off. Buffy is stuck in a room with Hobson or Blair. It's Blair. It is Blair? I, yeah, I, I, I commented which one it was. Okay. I found out at this point it was Blair. Okay. She tries the crossbow, which she just needs to get rid of the crossbow. The crossbow never works. It doesn't seem like an effective weapon for close combat. Mm -hmm. No, I remember in the Buffy Xbox game, which was hard. Yeah, this was like the original Xbox, like 2002. There was a level where you had to get vampires with the crossbow, but at a distance. Like it's oh, definitely distance. a distance. Yeah, weapon. yeah. yeah. Not, not when you're not stuck a in a ten by ten room. That doesn't work. She knocks him unconscious. She knocks a bookshelf over on him. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Which takes some strength. It well, does. She's, yeah. you know, <laughs> she's not completely helpless. 
Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. And then, mm-hmm. like, yeah, I was like, well, that's not going to take him out. He's a vampire. But then she's beating him unconscious with something. I don't know. Yeah, I got a statue. Yeah, yeah. she took him out. And then, and then you hear Kralik whispered, hide and seek. Uh. I know. I know. And then that's when he says, why did you come to the dark of the woods? To bring all these sweets to grandmother's house? I'm not sure why the Little Red Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood wasn't helpless. No, she wasn't. She killed the wolf. And so, yeah. Okay. Buffy tries to cross against him, and that is less than effective. He's loving it. I know. He's He's used to enjoy it. That's a good bird. (laughs) A little lower. So, Buffy, then she heads into the kitchen. And she sees the guy, the dead guy on the table, which I guess must be Hobson then. Hobson, right? Yeah. And and there's some dishes in the dish rack there drying nicely. That's nice because breakfast is included at the Sunnydale Arms. So that must be breakfast dishes. And then she leaves there and she tries to go up the stairs, but he grabs her leg. She does make it up the stairs into the room of Polaroids. Oh. Do you think all those Polaroids were of Joyce? I do. Ooh, that's I do. creepy. Yeah. Uh, and again, a lot of film. Because what was there, like, probably six to eight photos on any one roll of Polaroid film. Mm-hmm. Right? That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Can you imagine? And he's, like, taking the pictures, like, being all creepy and stuff. And he's like, oh, wait a minute. He has to take out the old yeah. one and open the package, the open the foil package, and reload it in, then do some more. And then when uh, that was all done, then he had to go into the room and fun. Yeah, and then the tape them up. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Yeah. All right. a, lot of, a lot of work went into this episode. Buffy, let's see. Okay, then Kralik is going to attack, but he needs his pills. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Buffy grabs the pills and she jumps down the laundry chute. Smart. Good, smart, yeah. Innovative. Falls into the room with Joyce. Kralik crashes in and take uh, takes about a whole bottle of those pills, whatever they are, dumps them all oh, yeah. down his gullet, and washes down, we find out, with holy water. I'm not sure when she put the holy water in that glass, but she did. She did it, yeah. And then, and then he dis- disappears. Yep, he disintegrates. Yeah, really. he disintegrates. And then when we're trying. Yeah, uh, oh, when she fell down the laundry chute, and Joyce is there, gag. Joyce is like, "Buffy, we have to get out of here." No shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joyce. In case we weren't sure what was going to happen next, Joyce is there to fill us in. <laughs> yes. Right. And then she's trying to get Joyce loose and she's having a hard time. And Joyce is like, can't you just come on, Blair? Not right now. And then Giles crashes in fighting with Blair and, and he kills Blair. Right before that happened, I was thinking, I'm like, Blair's still alive. He's just knocked out. And then that happens. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then they're back in the library. She's all beat up. And Quentin is, congratulations, you passed. The council is pleased. But Giles did not pass. Mm-hmm. And he is fired. Yeah. He has a father's love for her. Yeah. Fired on account of affection. Mm-hmm. That's got to be a lawsuit. I don't think that's adequate grounds for termination. No. 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 Okay, now we go to wrap things up. Everybody's in Joyce's kitchen making PB and J sandwiches. And we're all back together and we're happy. And Willow has on another colorful yeah. hat. This was the episode of Colorful Hats. She is ticked. She's going to write an angry yes. letter. Yeah, I, I think she it. was more worried than Buffy was about Giles being fired. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, so that's the end. Buffy is trying to open up a jar of Jif in the red cap. Oh, yeah. no, I'm sorry. Now, there are some yeah. jars that yeah, are yeah. difficult to open, but not peanut butter. Peanut butter jar no. is not one so of she's them. Struggling. She struggling. Xander's like, get it, get it. She... And he can't get it open either. That's how it is. <laughs> And then, the, and then the screen goes black, and, he, and you hear him go, "Willow, can you get this for me?" <laughs> that was pretty good. All right, so that's it. What do you uh, rate this one? Three and a half. Oh, I liked this one. I'm gonna give it. I'll also give mm-hmm. it three and a half. I liked yeah. this one. Favorite lines? It's a tie between Cordelia saying Giles and Buffy saying yeah. right after drink the holy water. If I was a full slayer power, I'd be punning right about now. I like the Oz. Ice is cool. It's water, mm. but it's not. 
And then I also liked when uh, Cordelia was like, did she lose her memory? <laughs> He's Giles. Giles. That was pretty good. <laughs> All right. So Giles is fired. Giles what, is what fired. Is you had to know that was coming. Like they're, it, they've been talking for a while. Like he hasn't been included in stuff. He's missed memos. There's a there's been a disconnect there for a long time. So what do you think this means for the storyline? Now Faith is gonna come back in and say it's okay, we don't need him, and they're just gonna go rogue. Okay. They're just gonna just take it on themselves, self managed. Okay. But I think eventually Giles is gonna come back in and and he's gonna help them with or without the council's okay. blessing. Maybe Mister Gwendolyn Post will show up. Maybe. What what's the next episode? Next episode Sean? of season three, episode thirteen, the Zeppo. Zeppo. The Zeppo. Z e t o. Zeppo. Zeppo. Zeppo was one of the Marx yes, brothers. Was. The Zeppo. What? Xander. Was Zeppo the one that didn't talk? That's no, Harpo. that's Harpo. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know then. The Zeppo. The mm-hmm. Zeppo. I will say, I don't think I've seen this one since it originally aired. The Zeppo. I have no prediction for okay. what that is. It, it, the Zeppo. It's going to be, they're going to, at some point, there's going to be a Marx Brother movie marathon and they're going to okay. be watching it. All right. I like it. And then Xander is going to say something about, you're pulling the Zeppo. You're pulling a Zeppo, buff. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, Zand. <laughs> you want to let everybody in on the socials? Let's talk about the socials. We are everywhere except for X and Snapchat. We're just not that cool about yeah. the Snapchat. The X, we just don't want to be a part yeah. of that mess. We are at the Sunnydale Diaries. We also have, as Sean mentioned, an email address, the Sunnydale Diaries at gmail.com. We also have a website, thesunnydalediaries.com, where you can find all of our episodes. You can also find a connection to our Discord server. And hopefully soon you will find a connection to buy or obtain one of our Jenny Calendar calendars that we're going to make for 2025. If you have any comments, suggestions, anecdotes, feedback for the podcast, please get in touch with us. If you would like to review our podcast, please do so. But you can do that on your platform of choice. And please spread the word. If you know somebody that might like this podcast, please let them know. That's how we grow. That was a little poem for you. I got it out of Buffy's book of poetry that Angel gave her. (laughs) Love it. All right. That's it. What, you got anything else? I think we covered everything. All right. All right. So that's it. Till next time. See you next time with the Zeppo. Bye. Bye.